Welcome to Comic Storian, your main channel for audio dramas of your favorite comic books. Today is the continuation of Peach Momoko's Ultimate X-Men run with issues 2 and 3. Enjoy this great story with this beautiful artwork. Sako stares at the ceiling from her bed, her eyes following a dark crack in the ceiling, her eyes drifting shut. The shadow seems to spread over her skin, and when she opens her eyes, she is laying on a hill with her friend, Tsubasa. Thanks for ditching school with me, Asako, Tsubasa says, and she shrugs as she watches the sky. Don't worry about it. I'm surprised you wanted to. Still, today is a good day for it, she says quietly, but Tsubasa admits that he never wanted to go back to school. Asako stares at him, admitting that dropping out of school would be pretty punk rock, before laying back down. She didn't realize that the real reason that Tsubasa didn't want to go back was that he was being bullied and tormented. She never even thought to ask. Suddenly, a massive eye is staring down at her from above. Hisako opens up her eyes in shock to find herself laying in bed, and she glances down at her hands, realizing that she is holding a crumpled piece of paper, another note. Suddenly, Hisako's mother calls to her from downstairs, reminding her about her motorcycle class, asking if she can get eggs on the way home. Hisako has no choice but to get up. She struggles out of bed and rides away on her bike. Later, the eggs in a bag by her side, she looks up in shock as a shadow approaches. Hey, it's you, right? The girl from the car wreck a few weeks ago? The young girl asks as the shadow moves away, revealing her to be a normal girl. Asako shakes her head. Not me. You get the wrong person, Asako says, but the white-haired girl shakes her head and leans in with a smile. I don't think I do. I'm May. What's your story? You can trust me. May says, offering to reveal her own secret to Hisako. She reaches into her bag and pulls out a small robotic dog that starts to sing. Look, she sings even though she doesn't have any batteries, May says with joy. Hisako nods, not sure what to say, and finally she holds up the crumpled note that she received in her dream. Hey, do you want to come with me? A short time later, the two girls arrive at an abandoned school that was mentioned in the note. Hisako sees a shadowy figure moving into the upper windows, but doesn't say anything to Mei, who's already heading towards the entrance. What are you waiting for? Let's go. What does this old school have to do with your car crash anyway? Mei asks her, and Hisako sighs as they move through the halls, explaining everything to her new friend, from the shadowy man seeking revenge for those who wronged Tsubasa before he took his own life, about her strange new powers that seem to protect her. I probably should have told you this before I got you involved. You must think that I'm crazy, Hisako says, but Mei shakes her head and smiles. Are you kidding? You're like a superhero. That's so cool. As they move through the hallways, Mei suddenly steps on something soggy. Reaching down, she picks up a soggy stuffed animal. Ew, how can you touch that thing? Hisako whispers. A light suddenly appearing at the end of the hallway and a guard rushing towards them, explaining that they aren't allowed to be in the building. But everyone stops when they hear a strange dripping sound coming from the room next to them. They push open the door to reveal dozens of stuffed animals hanging from ropes, dripping down onto lit candles, with strange writings all over the walls. The dripping suddenly comes to life, and the shadowy man rises up, turning towards them. Hell, Hisako. Thank you for accepting my invitation once again. You know the three boys who bullied Tsubasa? You won't be seeing them around anymore. I wanted to let you know. The shadow hisses. It's him. Hisako hisses to Mei, before turning back to the guard, trying to warn him about the killer. She gasps in shock, though, as the guard leans down to her, his face now twisted and rotting. Who's the killer? He snarls as maggots fall off of his skin. The two girls shriek, starting to run away, but Mei stops whirling around. She holds out her hand and sends a blast of wind back at the monster. Hisako's eyes widen in shock. What? How did you do that? Mei continues to hold the monster back with gusts of wind, but the shadow suddenly leaps through the maggot man, and he charges at the girls. I can't stop it, Mei shouts, but Hisako charges forward, swinging her grocery bag, and the red armor suddenly appears around her, her fist slamming into the shadow, smashing it into the ground. Mei smiles at her new friend, but Hisako just frowns in dismay. Oh, shoot, the eggs for my mom, she whispers as she stares at all of the smashed eggs. Elsewhere in the dark house, a young man removes a strange helmet from his head, wires snaking away to the pictures on the walls as he adjusts his glasses. Hisako, he hisses. 
The next day, Hisako was attending her high school entrance ceremony. That morning, she had seen on the news that three students who had bullied Tsubasa had been found hanging in front of the old middle school. She turns as she hears someone trying to get her attention and finds Mei waving excitedly. Hey! She whispers with joy. They meet outside and Mei is super excited that they're going to the same school. I should probably introduce myself properly. I'm Mei Igarashi, she says. Hasako Ichiki, nice to meet you. Hisako tells her with a smile. Mei looks at her new friend. Did you see the news this morning? That's crazy. Do you think it was the shadow guy? But we cut to a little bit later when memories are flashing through Hisako's mind. Years ago, she and a friend were pushing a 10 yen coin around a board, making it spell out a message, giggling at each other that the other was moving it. But there was someone else with them, a boy with glasses that didn't say a word. He ignored the girl's giggles and he read the message before standing up and walking away without a word. The girls stared at him. Hey, who was that guy? Hisako asked her friend, but the other girl just shrugged. What are you talking about? I thought you invited him. Her friend said. Next, Hisako stares at the 10 yen coin on the ground, and then she looks up as Mei joins her. You found a 10 yen coin? Lucky, Mei says, and Hisako nods as she stares at the coin. It reminded me of something strange that happened a long time ago, Hisako says quietly. The two friends sit and watch as the other girls play soccer, talking about what happened to them recently. Hisako looks at her new friend, asking her about the wind that she conjured up at the abandoned school. How did you do it? Hisako asks, and Mei shrugs her shoulders, looking at her phone. I don't honestly know. It's like I needed it so badly that I made it happen. But her mind is lost in a memory. You see, several months ago, when her mother called her down for breakfast, she asked her to stop by the neighbors after school and let them know that the family had just moved in. What? It's been a month. Why do I have to do it? May says as she bites into her breakfast, and her father doesn't even look up from his paper. After school, May walks around the neighborhood, but she's surprised as a cat comes flying out of an alleyway, a strange paper necklace around its throat and a frightened look on its face. The cat seems to follow her to the neighbor's house, and when she looks up, she sees someone in glasses watching from the shadows of the doorway. My cat, the man whispers. May stops short, staring back. Sorry to bother you. I'm May Igarashi. My family just moved in next door a month ago. May begins to state, but she realizes that the man is just staring at the cat. She reaches down to pick it up. Is this your cat? Is he okay? He seems scared. May points out and the man reaches for the cat, pulling it from her grasp. Frightened, the cat reaches out with its claws, cutting into May's arm. Sorry, I'll discipline the cat, the man says as he disappears into the shadows of the doorway. Later, with her arm bandaged, May sits on her bed, thinking about the strange encounter, but the wound hurts. And as May falls asleep, she dreams that the dark shadows are moving up her arm. She wakes up to the sound of her parents fighting. Her mother is shouting that May's father is seeing another woman. May, get down here! Dinner is ready! Her mother calls out mid-fight. May comes into the dining room. Are you two at it again? If you're gonna fight, can you just not wake me up? It's not like I can eat with you yelling at each other, May says sitting at the dinner table. Angry, her mother points to her father. He won't answer anything! It's like I don't exist! He won't even look at me when I'm talking! Her mother snaps, and May just glares at them both. Then leave him! Who needs him anyway? May says angrily, and her father slams his hand on the table, standing and walking towards May. He grabs her by the arm, slapping her across the face! Without a word, he walks back to his chair, sitting down. Anger and shock roll through May like a storm, and it happens. Wind and rain suddenly flew through the dining room, throwing everything in disarray. And in moments, the storm passes. The family is left soaking wet. May looks up in shock as her mother points to her. That storm, how? May, your eyes, your hair. She motions to the fact that May now has gray eyes and white hair. And her father looks up, adjusting his glasses. I don't need punks like you in my house. Get out, he says simply. Now we go back to the present, a ball flying through the air, hitting May in the head, knocking her out of her memories. Both girls look up at Nico, one of the weirder girls in the school. She's always like that. There's something strange about her. Her parents are psychics, like for real. Hisako whispers. Nico stares at them for a moment, walking over, peering at them through the magnifying glass. What? May asks, and Nico continues to watch them. Interesting. You two are mutants too? Nico says quietly, and both girls look at her in surprise. Two, they say in unison. And that was Ultimate X-Men issues two and three. 
The next video in this series will be coming relatively soon and would be voiced by Andy moving forward. So be sure to subscribe to the channel to get notifications when that goes live. And if you enjoyed this, please be sure to like, subscribe, leave a comment down below. Thank you everyone so much for all your support. We really appreciate it. And we really miss you, Benny.